Hi, I'm Alan McEvgren, Professor of Geography and Information Sciences and Technology at Penn State. I've been at Penn State for uh, quite a number of years uh, doing research and teaching in geographic information science. In terms of research, I tend to focus on research in cartography, geovisualization, and more recently, the integration of computational methods with visual methods to help people figure out how to extract information from very large complex data sets, particularly those related to place. Some of my recent research has leveraged social media data, tweets in particular, to explore uh, the geography of attitudes and spatial behavior, and I'll show you an example of a couple of uh, projects that we just finished up recently. This recent paper uh, that I did with a group of colleagues that you see here uh, focused on using social media data that's geolocated to understand people's attitudes uh, toward a political event, the Women's March of 2017. Uh, Twitter was our data source in this particular case, focusing only on the geolocated tweets. And one of the interesting findings that we had, uh, if we scroll down to uh, our map here, was that for most of the cities in the U.S., uh, there were quite a few more positive tweets than negative tweets about this particular event. Uh, but you can see the small number of cities in the U.S. Uh, where the opposite was the case. The second study finished up recently uh, was done with my uh, PhD student, Jan and Zin, who finished her PhD this summer. It also used geolocated tweets, but in this particular case, we focused on sports tourism. And we're looking in particular in whether we could identify the differences between everyday behavior and behavior of sports tourists to the sporting events that they were interested in. Not surprisingly, we focused in on Penn State football and travel to Penn State football games during uh, 2016, uh, which was a good year for Penn State. And looking at this map, you can see that people came from all over the country to attend Penn State football games, large number of people from the bigger cities near State College. Uh, but people from everywhere in the country were willing to travel. And we identified quite a number of people who traveled a lot farther for sporting events than they travel for other kinds of things in their everyday life. Hope you found those uh, interesting. Uh, in addition to the research, of course, I teach across a broad range of topics in geographic information science. At the undergrad level for freshmen, I teach an introduction to geographic information science that's general. Uh, in upper levels of undergrad, I've taught cartography and geovisualization, sometimes uh, human-centered systems for geographic information. At the graduate level, I've taught in those areas as well as in visual analytics. And most recently, I've been teaching our research design class for incoming resident graduate students. In the MGIS program, I've been teaching Geography 583, uh, which is, of course, focused on geographic information system analysis and design. As you can see, I'm sitting here in my outdoor office. Uh, I've been spending a lot of time uh, using uh, this porch as an office since uh, the coronavirus events happened and we started doing work at home, research and teaching from home. Uh, I expect to spend a lot of time on the porch here as long as the weather is warm enough uh, this fall because both of my classes are going to be online uh, classes that I can teach from here. Uh, ultimately, of course, I'll have to move inside uh, and not be able to enjoy the outdoors. It's been uh, great for me to have an outdoor office because my hobby happens to be bird watching. Uh, so I can sit here on my porch with my binoculars uh, and see what birds are in the yard and keep up on my hobby while getting some work done. To facilitate my birding hobby, I've been using a really interesting set of geospatial 
Technologies out of the Cornell Ornithology Lab called eBird. It's a really big citizen science project. Uh, they encourage birders to uh, put their sightings into an app and upload them to their database. They have over a billion bird sighting records uh, in that database right now. And I'll show you a little bit of how eBird works just to give you an idea and then talk a little bit about how I'm thinking about linking my research in geographic information science with my hobby of bird watching. One of the great things about eBird for a birder who keeps a list like I do is that you can set it up so it will email you daily or even hourly on birds that you haven't yet seen. And this can be anywhere in the world or down to uh, county level. Uh, so I have it set up to email bir me birds that I haven't seen in Center County. This was back in May. Um, I got this email saying a yellow-breasted chat along with these other species had been seen in the county somewhere that day. Uh, and if I scroll down to the yellow-breasted chat, uh, I can go to a map that shows me where that yellow-breasted chat had been seen. And I pr that prompted me to go out and look for the bird. Uh, this is the list for that location. When I went out that day, you can see here uh, the route that I took. And if we scroll down, uh, you can see that I got my bird, uh, the yellow-breasted chat, at the location that someone else had seen it earlier in the day. So, hope you found that interesting, and I think you can see how the spatial temporal characteristics of bird sightings and birder behavior uh, lends itself to connecting to GI science research. Uh, I gave a talk in Germany a couple of years ago about how these eBird data can actually be a really interesting data set for uh, GI scientists to work on. And a couple of uh, computer scientists that were there in the audience got really interested, one postdoc from Germany in particular, and she encouraged a couple of grad students in Germany to do their thesis and dissertation research using eBird and other similar data sets from uh, other locations in, in Europe to look at the question of uncertainty in citizen science data using visual analytics methods to try to understand the various kinds of uncertainty that you, you get in these data. I've been uh, coaching these grad students over, over time uh, in their research and hopefully in a year or so uh, you'll see a publication that comes out uh, talking about some of the ways in which visual analytics has been used to understand the uncertainties uh, in these data. So I uh, hope you learned a little bit about my research and teaching, and maybe I got you interested in birding and using eBird as well. Uh, feel free to contact me uh, through my Penn State email account uh, for any questions about my teaching or research or, or about the links between uh, birding activity and GI science research. If you happen to be taking a class from me uh, this term, you can contact me through Canvas. I'll leave you with the image of one of my favorite birds that I saw over at Bald Eagle State Park at the end of July this year, the green heron. Enjoy.